Hello and uh, welcome back to another update as we cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. We start out in the Roboteno direction where we have the most significant news. We have reports that the Ukrainian forces decided to withdraw from the Surovikin line, meaning all of their positions ahead of the anti-tank ditches and trenches the Russians had here to the northwest of Verbove is going to be abandoned by the Ukrainian forces. This is likely due to Russian advances at the northern and southern flanks of those positions, where they've recently released a video where a drone films Russian soldiers capturing a bunch of Ukrainian soldiers here in the northern parts of the forest lines right here, where there is this geolocated footage and picture showing the location of the video which was released allegedly showing russian soldiers ending ukrainian soldiers who had surrendered which of course is against the rules and laws of war we see that the russian forces had with this video advanced all the way to this point which is about a third of the way before connecting with the northern side which would cut off all of the ukrainian forces here to the east this is a case similar to when the Russians captured Lysyshansk and Severodonetsk, where they were advancing here to the southwest of Lysyshansk, and they had captured most of Severodonetsk. Therefore, the Ukrainian forces decided to withdraw completely from Lysyshansk, almost completely without a fight, due to the risk of Russian forces encircling them by moving and advancing to the west of Lysyshansk, where they advanced and captured villages here to the west of it, before also making a river crossing in the north, which ended up threatening the Ukrainian positions by the Sishensk. So we're seeing a similar withdrawal of the Ukrainian forces from the Verbova direction to the northwest to strengthen their positions by Robotine, possibly hold on to the village and focus their forces there, or to completely withdraw from the salients, which they managed to capture through the Ukrainian offensive. So we're seeing that most of the efforts that the Ukrainians put into their offensive may be lost in this very withdrawal, where they'll lose a huge chunk of it with the recent Russian advances in this direction. So we're seeing very heavy fighting and very cruel fighting taking place in this direction of the front line. We then move on to Novomikhailivka, where we see here in the direction of the city that the Russian forces have yet again launched another armored assault here to the northeastern outskirts of the city. So we're seeing constant Russian attempts at entering the city and getting a foothold at it. So we're seeing they are advancing from four different directions, directly to the east, to the southeast, to the directly to the south and to the southwest of the city with constant advances, attempts with armored assaults, as well as infantry-based assaults in every direction, day in and day out, in the direction of Novomikhailivka. We've also seen advances to the north and to the northeast. However, they are far from getting close enough to actually establish fire control or attacking the city itself here to the south. We then move northwards in the direction of Marinka, where the Russian forces have moved westwards from the city itself and are now fighting in the outskirts of Hryorivka, both in the northern and southern parts, where they've managed to capture the roundabout here to the west of the city. So we're seeing Russian advances into the city of Hryorivka, which as a result of the Russian advances in Marinka and the capture of the city, we are most likely also going to see further assaults towards Pobieda and Novomikhailivka, now that more troops have been freed up from fighting within the city to now moving westwards and expanding the zone of control to leave the russian flanks strong they need to capture pobieda to establish a bridgehead and positions across the front in these less open areas having pobieda acting as an outpost to cave and overlook over the fields to the west and to the south of it having the russian forces being able to have Pobieda as a strong flank. Without Pobieda, the flank of the Russian forces is weak and vulnerable, especially if the Ukrainian forces plan on going around Marinka here to the south and advancing on Russian positions from this position. They can easily build up troops here in the fields and move past the Russian positions. The Russian forces likely have 
minefields here to the south, but it is yet a possibility and taking Pobieda would completely negate the extent of potential of the Ukrainian forces launching any form of offensive operations in this direction. So Pobieda is definitely a big target for the Russian forces, as well as getting closer to Novorivka to attack it from the northern side as well. We then move further north in the direction of Avdivka, where the Russian forces have made some advancements here to the south of the water treatment plant to the south of the waste heap in the northern parts of Avdivka. So the Russian forces have been seen and detected by this geolocated footage to have launched infantry assaults towards the forest lines where they are under fire from Ukrainian drones and artillery. So based on this footage, we see that the Russian forces are attempting advancements here to the south of the water treatment plant to gain positions here in the forest patches, as well as attack in the direction of the Dacha area. So with all of these attempts, we see that the Russian forces made some advancements, but whether or not they'll be able to hold it is another question, as the Ukrainian forces are putting a lot of efforts into holding these positions here to the north of Avdivka and specifically at the flanks which is the main target of the Ukrainian forces right now. If the main goal of the Russians in 2023 was to prevent a Ukrainian offensive, the main goal of the Ukrainian forces for this winter is to prevent the capture of Avdivka for as long as possible. We then move on further north in the direction of Bakhmut, where we see the Russian forces have yet again managed to recapture the cemetery. So the cemetery has changed hands quite a few times, over the past few days as the Russian forces continue pressuring Ukrainian positions and the Ukrainians attempts to counterattack and regain lost positions from the Russian forces. So all of this fighting taking place in the west of Bakhmut is currently centered around the south of Bohdanivka, within Bohdanivka itself, the direction of Rihorivka in the west of Bakhmut and to the south in the direction of Lishivka. These are the main points of combat as we can see with the advancements taking place in the area and heavy fighting is taking place all across the front here to the west of Bakhmut. It seems it is a general offensive operation by the Russian forces to reach the canal line and establish positions there, while the Russian forces continue their attempts at holding their positions, pushing westwards and capturing the canal line, while the Ukrainian forces try to delay the Russians as much as possible or even prevent their advancements. We then move further north in the direction of Spirne, where the Russian forces have actually yet again managed to gain a foothold within the village outskirts here in the central parts. This is taking place and proven by the geolocated footage here, which shows Russian soldiers within Spirne. We see it from the geolocated image here. Russian soldiers entered the outskirts of the village in the central parts, where they were then facing off against Ukrainian forces, where they started a firefight, and the outcome of the battle is unknown based on the footage. But we do see that heavy fighting takes place in the direction of Spirinet, both to the south of the village and within it now, with Russian assault groups reaching the inner sides of it. Spirinet itself has been a battle between the two sides for a very long time. We've seen the village switch hands between the two sides many, many times, numerous times, to the point where at some point it just left it in the gray zone because it was changing hands so much that there was no use taking and keeping track of it. But now we see that the Ukrainians have had and hold on to it for a very long time, with Russian forces numerous times getting a foothold within it, but always being pushed out. We'll see if this is different or there will be a repeat of the past couple of times that the Russian forces may to gained positions and then were pushed out again. We also have this article which pretty much has a former British senior officer talking about how with the Russians being able to withstand and hold firm against the Ukrainian counteroffensive and the Ukrainians not really gaining that much out of it shows that the Russians are prepared for a long-term war and if the Ukrainians are going to have to keep up with that they're in a very dangerous position as so far it seems that the Russians are outproducing and now even potentially outnumbering the Ukrainian forces in the battle in the war. And with these developments, we see that it becomes increasingly difficult for the Ukrainian forces to actually get a win out of this. Some Western officials even claim that there's no potential for Ukraine to actually win this war, considering that their objective to win considers all of the Ukrainian territories, including Crimea, to be under Ukrainian hands, which is becoming increasingly unlikely as the Russian force continuously build up and ramp up their commitment to the war and winning it. 
All of this combined makes it very dim for Ukraine, especially if they look to win the war. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you for watching and have a great day.